Hello, ladies and gentlemen, everybody. We're having Chase Gillis today. Hello, Chase. Hello, everyone, and hello, Andre. I first gotta say, Andre, like your voice is so smoothing. Like it's so nice to. I I, I already feel so calm. Like already, it's it's it, it's amazing. Yeah, it's also pretty early for me. It's late for you. So I'm also trying not to wake up everybody. <laughs> but that's, yeah, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. So it's absolutely amazing to see you. Uh, I've seen a lot of your videos and they're very inspirational, uh, motivational, uh, motivating. And uh, so we're talking, uh, we want to talk about something that we can learn, something that we can apply. Mm -hmm. And you said that the first thing you would like to start talking about is the relationship between discomfort and overcoming stuttering. Exactly. Yeah, so, uh, and yeah, for many of us, it's not quite obvious that there is any relationship. Uh, many start like working with the speaking side because that's what's obvious, like uh, visible for mm -hmm. many of us. So how would you describe that connection and how did you come to the point where you realize there is some connection between discomfort and overcoming stutter. Definitely. All right. And if you need to stop me at any time during this, like feel free to ask questions or whatever, because, mm -hmm. um, yeah. So for me, the most important characteristic someone can develop that has a stutter, if they want to overcome their stutter is to develop the ability to consistently seek discomfort and I'm making that huge claim because that, that is for me the most important thing the most important characteristic and it's because your comfort zone what you're comfortable with is so small to begin with especially if you stutter especially if you stutter because what's comfortable for you right now maybe just like talking to your pets maybe just talking to your friends and family maybe even that but a lot of time talking to friends and family is still very, very scary for you. But the reason why I believe seeking discomfort is the best thing you can do if you stutter is because all the amplified emotions you get from it, the positive ones and the negative ones, not just like the, neg the negative ones especially, because when you're in a heightened state, when you're outside of your comfort zone and you're in discomfort, you're getting an insane amplification of emotions, not just positive, but also negative. Mm -hmm. And you also might ask, like, how would, how would having an amplified feeling of negative emotions help me overcome my stutter? And honestly, it doesn't really make sense, but if you break it down, like, like you're trying to work at the gym, like you're trying to lift weights, say, say inside of your comfort zone is, is up to five pounds, right? Nice. Say, talk, say talking to your dog is zero pounds because when you talk to your dog, you know, he's not going to judge you. You don't have that feeling of judgment on him. and say talking to your friends and family, that's five pounds because you hope they won't judge you. They, but you, you can see the like little micro expressions in their face when you have a block or something. So you know there's something there. So say that's five pounds. A lot of stutters, like I've talked to hundreds and a lot of them stop there, lifting five pounds. Like friends and family, maybe coworkers, but that's where the comfort zone ends at that point. And let's say 100 pounds is the heaviest you can go. So 100 pounds to five pounds. All your life, no matter how much you lift those five pounds, you'll never have the strength of if you were lifting six pounds or seven pounds or eight pounds. Right. 
But if you lift those 100 pounds, and since they're not actually physical weights, since they're not actually at the gym and it's mental weights, mental weights meaning more anxiety, more embarrassment, more self-doubt, more judgment from others, all the things that make you stutter more, say you lift those 100 pounds up, say whatever scares the most is 100 pounds, giving a speech, doing a presentation, asking that girl out. Now, once you put those weights down, you had all those amplified feelings of emotions, all those negative emotions that would make you stutter more. Now, when you go back to the back down to the five pounds, they're going to feel a lot, a lot, a lot lighter, right? Right. Mm -hmm. They're just going to feel featherless. Those emotions that you just skyrocketed so high of a negative emotions, now lifting back five pounds, it's going to feel so light. And if you do that over and over and over again consistently, you're going to make six pounds feel a lot lighter, seven pounds feel a lot lighter. Now talking to strangers, say that's 50 pounds, 50 pounds is going to feel a lot lighter now since you just lifted 100 pounds, whether if you started from 5 pounds to 50. Like from 5 pounds to 50, you're going to have a lot more negative emotions and you're going to stutter a lot more. You have a lot more self-doubt. But if you start from, from just continuously leaving a comfort zone, it's going to feel a lot and a lot and a lot lighter. Mm -hmm. And that's the main purpose behind it is just – is just being vulnerable to stutter because I know a lot of people are scared to stutter. That's when they get the embarrassment and they try to change words out or they don't even want to talk. But when you stutter, it's subconscious. I, I, it's hard to say now that I haven't had a bad stuttering episode in a while, but I know when I would have be in the middle of something and I would stutter and stutter and stutter there's nothing worse in the world, right? It's like, it's an indescribable feeling. But if you don't get that and you hold that, that words in, it does way more damage to you than if you stutter. And you're also uh, building. So, yeah. so what you're saying, because again, uh, I'm thinking like a regular person who stutters, who says, uh, I'm getting outside of my comfort zone and it's impossible because I will stutter. So what you're saying is go like, that's okay if you stutter. So mm -hmm. like, uh, or like, because you need that emotion anyways, even the yeah. negative one. Yeah, exactly. And when you like, there's even times now when I know I'm going to stutter, like I still have bad days. And I know this bad day will keep on going if I don't face this fear, if I don't go and stutter. And again, like lifting 100 pounds, if, I, if I'm having a bad day, I will do something so, ridic so ridic ridiculously outside of my comfort zone that it just scares me to bits. And say I just lifted 65 pounds and I just embarrass myself in front of 50 people now, when I stutter in front of one person, the, nowhere near the same amount of negative emotions will come up. So that means nowhere near the same amount of stuttering will come up. And doing that over and over again, you just get in this rhythm of building that momentum. And you, like, I'm so, like, just talking to you right now, I'm just like, two, two years ago, man, it was, I couldn't get two words out. And now just doing this over and over again consistently uh -huh. is biggest piece of advice I can give me. Yeah, yeah. I agree because that's my experience as well. Uh, even though I played in my therapy with the physical aspects of speaking, but I, I feel a huge change after doing some uh, uncomfortable things. Uh, it uh, like specifically talking to somebody, uh, like using like the trained speech, talking about stuttering. So, um, uh, and you mentioned several. You mentioned several times the judgment of other people. So, yeah. um, 
So, and what you're saying, again, about the comfort zone, uh, again, tells me, maybe you would correct me, that the stuttering shame that we're having is the most, like, the, the biggest piece of that whole thing. Mm. Wait, can you say that one more time? Uh, so, my question is about stuttering shame. So, uh, would you agree that this is because you mentioned judgment uh -huh. they're kind of very very close judgment yeah. means someone is judging you something's wrong with you so um, so uh, it's the stuttering shame that we're dealing with mm -hmm. or, yeah, I... or, or you would put it differently okay yeah i I've never thought of the word shame, but now when I think about it, like yeah, this is the psychological term. Uh, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah. I believe shame is definitely a great word for that, though, because I've I've never really thought about shame, and I usually just think about embarrassment or uh -huh. fear or anger. Uh -huh. sh shame, shame is a great word because when you're in the middle of the block. And you just want it out, but you can't get it out. That is pure shame right there. So like, I know I I know I can get it out. Like it beats you up knowing you can get it out if you're alone or if you're just less anxious and it's just so shameful that you can't get it out. But yeah. I yeah. Mm -hmm. When you're ashamed means you're doing something wrong, and it means that next time I won't do it. I don't want to do it next time. And we're kind of as you said, we're limiting our uh, world to like a small space. Mm. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Yeah. Um, to go off shame and judgment from others, I think altogether the judgment from others is the biggest, the biggest piece of why you stutter. Not like there's anxiety involved, there's fear of embarrassment, there's all of that. But judging from others, I find is that if you work on that, that can get you the fastest results. Because be, you don't have to, the, like, so to leave my comfort zone, I did a lot of comfort zone challenges, like laying on the ground for one minute in a busy place and doing 20 push-ups in the middle, in the middle yeah. of my school's hallway, just embarrassing myself. And I didn't even need to talk. That's how I know that that's how I know that stuttering is such a mental game because I didn't even have to talk when I was doing those comfort zone challenges. Right. But when I got out of them and I got judged for just being me, not just talking, for just laying down on the ground for one minute and judged by 50 people, I got up and now when I go to talk, there's not going to like – the judgment isn't going to be there nearly as much since I just got judged by 50 people at once. Now I've talked to one person. Now the, the level of care I have for their opinion on, on, of me is so dissolved that it's, it's like I'm floating when I'm talking to someone now. And can I ask you, how did you come to the idea to actually like doing that is that you read it in the book or it struck you somehow uh you you came to it yourself or yeah okay so it's actually a funny story um just first off i used to watch a lot of how to overcome stuttering videos uh -huh. and I, I i didn't come across any any of yours i don't believe but all the ones I came across, they made my stutter worse. Uh -huh. And it, it was weird because I found I was thinking about my stutter more and more often if I watched those videos. Uh -huh. So when I realized that, I switched my, my site to something that I'm also passionate about, which is at the time when I was, when I was 16, I, I was pretty horrible with girls. So uh -huh. I, I looked up a game. I looked up how to pick up girls. And one of the best traits a guy can have is care, care freeness, right? Uh -huh. if, like, to do your own thing, whether 
no matter what the other person's thinking, to stick to your path and do your own thing. Wow. But it, it doesn't just come like that. It takes practice to be carefree. And this guy I was following at the time called Jason Capital, he was telling me of this exercise that he did where he walked into a nail salon and would do 20 push-ups in the nail salon. Uh-huh. And this trained his brain to not care about other people's opinions. Uh-huh. So I was like, you know what? Like, I'm going to start doing that. And as I started doing that, I noticed my stutter was getting less and less and less. And I, I made the connection in my mind. That's when the connection started. And I, I was thinking, man, like stuttering is a mental game. And once you lose the judgment from others, it, it just becomes so much easier to, you just become so much more you. And when you are you without being in your head about other people over there, other people over there, and you can, you're just allowed to do whatever you want to do, that's when and you stop thinking about your stutter. You know, it's also because I stopped thinking about stuttering. I was more in tune with trying to pick up girls. I was trying to, I was more in tune with the techniques of carefreeness, of eye contact, of all that stuff that stuttering wasn't even on my mind. It was the other thing I was trying to grow. And that's a huge thing for me too, is to not focus on overcoming your stutter, but to focus on, be, on becoming more confident, focus on becoming a better version of yourself. Because when you focus on your stutter, you stutter more. It's just- got it. Got it. That's a beautiful idea. So, and you mentioned again that you watched some videos and you became more conscious about your speaking. So you say you're focusing on being confident. To me, I actually, I usually put it in a way that you're actually doing what you want to do. You're becoming more active. And if you're doing it, that's a positive kind of plus. Like you, I've done it even if I stutter. So because, again, many people, they're, they, they're feeling that I stuttered. Uh, and it, it instantly colors that experience into negative. So... Yeah. Um, um, uh, so, uh, what you're saying is that, again, to me, as, as I read it, that if I stutter, that's, that's okay. Yeah, that's completely uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, something that was really key for me that I read in a book, <sighs> that forced me to talk to people even though I knew I was going to stutter because even though you know that's the right thing to do sometimes, your fear just takes over and you're just unable to talk to that person. But honestly, this thing I read in the book, the best way to grow is to judge yourself based on your actions, not the outcomes judge yourself based on whether you took that action or whether you didn't don't judge yourself on how it came out don't judge yourself based on if the other person ran away if the other person gave you a bad look if the other person was happy judge yourself based if you went and actually did the thing because when you do the thing that's all that matters and you you cannot control the outcome because you're only the like right now you're your best self you can be right now you can't change who you are right now so if you take the action, that's who you are right now. There's no changing that. And there's no change in the outcome because you are you right now. Judge yourself yeah. if you take that action, not if you stutter or not. Yeah, I love this point. I want to put it like bold. That's yeah. the, that's the thing. Uh, uh, yeah, that's a great, again, paradigm pattern. Like, um, yeah. So... Uh, yeah. I'll ask you if you, we have somebody joining. Thanks everyone for joining. You can ask questions if you have any. Um, so uh, do I understand correctly that you're not doing anything about the physical side of our speaking? So you feel like you can speak 
And that means you don't need to do anything about the physical. Like some people say about some breathing, some people talk about some voice exercises. Like, like yeah. Uh, okay. That, um, actually, again, that's, that's, that's the question. I, uh, a bit of the answer is that you're making videos. And for me, I believe that's, a speaking exercise every time and that's the speaking exercise I suggest doing just shooting videos mm -hmm. uh, but what's what's your uh, answer to that like, to you do oh, oh, okay so I definitely believe there are exercises and takes techniques that will help you start help you stutter less I have never really gone into the breathing exercises, although I'm not saying they don't work. I'm just saying that's something I haven't gone into. What I focus a lot on is my emotions because I know when I'm in a negative state, I stutter more. Mm -hmm. and I know when I'm in a positive state, I stutter less. So if there is a breathing exercise that I do, it's not to try to open any airways or a technique to stutter less. It's a technique to put myself in a better state of emotions. So there is one that I do. It's called Bow and Arch Bioenergetics. Mm. It, it, it's where you put your hands back. Oh God! And you backwards and you breathe, uh -huh. like, and then you lean forward in an arch. Do you have and something? The name of the guy who teaches that uh, I forgot. L. Elliot Hills? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh huh, uh huh. Yeah, that's where I learned it from. It's amazing because once you finish two rounds of that, you're you just feel unstoppable. And I actually did that before I even got on this call because it just amps me up to get in a great mood. And it's not, and again, it's not focusing on my speech. Then it's not focusing on if I stutter or not. It's focusing on my emotions. And if I'm in a good emotional state then I won't stutter nearly as much as if I'm in a bad emotional state. Wow, got it. Some people are asking me about meditation. So I see that what you're saying is probably uh, is aiming at the same thing as meditation, just going into your body and uh, activating our body, if you wish. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Yeah, I, I have meditated starting probably three or four years ago i did it for years straight in the past year i've been too consistent with it but i definitely noticed some subtle changes about me and i definitely noticed that after meditation i am much more self-aware of my stutter much more self-aware which isn't a bad thing necessarily because when you're self-aware of your speech you begin to find little things right that tick your speech that make you stutter more that you wouldn't have been able to to find if you weren't in this calm med meditative state so one of my some of my best realizations came from a meditation it, it it's not so much to help my meditation help my stutter because i i don't think i noticed a huge difference in that for me meditation really helped me become self-aware of what i do when i stutter and then how i would be able to fix it like doing the carefreeness challenges and stuff like that mm -hmm. but i'm not putting down meditation at all because meditation is amazing got Love it. it yeah and coming back to your videos because again i uh my personal experience that shooting videos is a great exercise. Yeah. Uh, how did you come to the idea of maybe I shoot a video and put it on YouTube or, or somewhere else or start, start my Instagram? Uh, but yeah. Probably the, it's YouTube more with the videos. I'm still not on Instagram actively. They don't put, they don't allow like uh long long videos i thought oh you can add longer videos now oh now now there's an igtv thing it's called i think you go up to about 10 minutes or something uh, now uh -huh. but yeah how how i how i started yeah was 
the guy I mentioned, Jason Capital, with the dating coach. Yep. About two years ago, I think that's when I posted my first video, maybe one year ago. And it was, a, I guess, a self-development seminar kind of thing. Uh-huh. Talking about your purpose, your passion, like how to do stuff like that. And it just got me so motivated to start this thing I knew I was passionate about. And before I even went to that seminar, my girlfriend at the time and I were talking and I was saying like, like I know how important it is to find your purpose in life, but like I can't find it. And she asked me a bunch of questions like, like if you had no money, what would you do? And all this stuff. And I was like, I just want to help. I was at, I was at the sushi rest, sushi restaurant and middle of bite my eyes when she when she asked me that question i just started crying i was like i just want to help one person i want to help one person overcome their stutter because in that moment i felt all the pain back of like how it feels to stutter and it's absolutely horrendous but that's when i realized like i need to do something so when i hit that sem hit that seminar up and i came back from it i was so motivated to to help people but Every, when I posted that first video on my YouTube channel, how to overcome your stutter, like a week after I had my worst, I, I've never told anyone this, I had my worst, my worst stuttering episode for like weeks. And I, I was like, I felt like a fraud as soon as I put that out because I was like, God. how can I say how to overcome your stutter? And then for like two weeks, I was stuttering worse than I ever had. And I, I still don't know why it happened. Maybe because it was life testing me. Like you have to get through this. This is you to prove to yourself that you can tell people how to overcome the stutter. And once I did that, I can keep putting more videos out. But yeah, that's, that's how I started. It's just like me and my girlfriend in a sushi, in a sushi rush, sushi rush, rush, restaurant. Yeah. Actually yeah. what you're saying again, that's, that's a good point and i think i also said the same thing so when something bad happens actually it's always a great thing to again come back to this realization and evaluate your actions not and your speaking overall and your like again behavior not in terms of that technical thing but in terms of what you actually did so you went there you did it that's that's what you want to do at the end of the day. That's that's the main uh, thing for us. So yeah. uh, so you shoot the video, and again, you inspired people. You you like, shared something something valuable. So for for many people, it it might be something that changed. Uh, something in their life and that is important so not not that yeah probably yeah so um, uh, and can I ask you one more thing uh, again maybe it's a bit personal but what is your idea about the future like do you see yourself doing something about stuttering are you thinking about a job or like starting some business or some personal development or you're still not sure what you're going to do? Yeah, for sure. Um, definitely, definitely, definitely. I'm helping stutters. Like my, my life, I found like I was put to stutter to overcome it, to help people overcome it also. Just right now, I feel like, I've had these thoughts recently that I'm in such a good position in work right now that I should just bank my like save up, save up, save up, do, and then I'm gonna move somewhere for a year. Like I was thinking either England or thinking like Sweden, someplace like that, and hopefully by then I'll have enough money that I can strictly start the laptop and helping people overcome their stutter that way. And then my end goal would be like a Tony Robbins kind of thing. Like posting, yeah. posting, 
places yeah. around. Yeah. yeah, because again, as Io said as well, I believe uh, we're coming back to the personal development stuff that is helping us the most. Uh, what what you're saying? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Got you. Got you. Um, so. So actually, I think I think we've gone pretty much through the questions, and yeah. I think uh, to sum up, to sum up again, you have the video. So, uh, but uh, like, if if I'm the person who wants to do something today, yeah. Uh, again, you have videos saying do that and that, but. Uh, what would you again tell me once again what uh where do i start okay so i love this word called kaizen and it's a Jap it's a japanese word for small improvements every day that lead to big improvements in the long run and that's where the consistency consistency came in at the beginning of this talk where I said the most important characteristic you can develop in yourself if you want to overcome your stutter is having the ability to consistently seek discomfort. And that doesn't mean doing a huge thing every single day. Kaizen means just taking one step today. Maybe that means just starting a YouTube channel, not posting anything, just starting one. Maybe tomorrow you, you, you write the script for it. Maybe the next day you shoot it. Maybe the next day you just do little steps just so you don't get overwhelmed. But if you write it down on paper and you have it planned out of the steps you want to do and you just do boxes for every single day and you check them off as you go, just little steps, little steps. Over time, it leads to an empire, and that's what I'm doing. I'm not taking massive steps, massive steps. I'm just taking little steps, and it builds momentum, first of all, which momentum helps you stutter. Like once you hit, When you hit that flow state, it helps you stutter, and on top of that, you're developing yourself, and you're just adding like stepping stones, stepping stones, stepping stones. So the, the thing I would recommend you do if you didn't start anything yet is to answer questions on a piece of paper like the first thing to do answer questions about your own thoughts about what you really want in life about if you can see yourself five years from now doing something that if you wouldn't even get paid for it, if you had unlimited money in your bank account, what would you do if you had to do something for the rest of your life? Get clear on that and then make stepping stones towards that goal, not correlated to stuttering at all. Not one bit, because when you think about stuttering, you stutter more. Just self-development. That, that. I love this idea so much. Again, I would put it bold because, yeah, it, it totally changes our like attitude. So to focus on what we're doing rather than focusing on stuttering, like on the exactly. technical, because we're so much focused on the technical side. I stuttered. Something's wrong with me. Again, shame, embarrassment. So when we focus on doing, just doing what we want to do, it's 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 a totally different kind of again evaluation of our actions. Like totally different ladder. Totally totally different. Mm. A whole new perspective. Yeah, eh? yeah, yeah. That's that's yeah. I can relate to that. Resonate. Uh, and uh, that's, I think that's, uh, again, it might sound like a conceptual thing, but again, it's the most practical thing to, mm -hmm. to really decide where you're going uh, and how you're going. It like de determines the, your journey and how you do that. Yeah. 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 
Gotcha. Judge yourself based on your actions, not not your outcomes. Judge yourself based on your actions, not your outcomes. That's so massive for stutters. Yeah. 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 So uh, thank you, for, thank you so much for your time, Chase. We have some people who join. Thank you so so much uh, for watching. Um, yeah. So thank you so so much. It's great to have you. Let's. Keep in touch if you can. Again, I'm inviting all participants to show up on Saturday. That would be just amazing to have uh, everyone together to have a conversation. That would be awesome. Um, yeah. yeah. Again, thank you so, so much. Um, hope to see you soon. Yeah, for sure, Andre. Thank you so much for having me. This was honestly like very, ther very, very uh i can't think of the word is it, it was very nice talking to you and meeting yeah. for the first time like honestly it was it was a great time yeah so thank you thanks everybody i'll stop our live